where um, Noahides can really think about concepts is in the seven mitzvot, because that is the embodiment of what the nations of the world must do. And therefore, it's the embodiment of the system that will make the world successful. So when you look at the world falling apart, you'll say, okay, what must the nations do? What the nations must do must keep the seven Noahide laws. Fascinating that there are, of the seven Noahide laws, Jews of their 13 have to keep the seven Noahide laws also, but there are going to be differences, which we'll understand, because there's a different role, there's a different understanding, a different application. But the depth of understanding this is something that I want to um, be able to bring to you because I feel that I could speak a little more freely and analyze what this is. Now, I, I, there's two different components to this. One is the halacha. What is the law? Okay. What is the law? What is breaking this law, the seven Hawaii laws? What is not? Unless I say, this is lehalacha. This is the law. I am now talking conceptually. We will get to God willing questions on specifics, but I want to start out conceptually. I want to understand the structure because seven is not an arbitrary number. System, the system, seven days of the week. Okay, seven musical notes. Seven is a six sides of a three-dimensional object in the object itself. Why is there seven Noahide commandments? What about the ten commandments? Why are there why why are there ten? Now why are Noahide seven? What's the quality of seven? Seven keeps coming up in the Torah in so many ways. What is seven? So I want to start today's class with opening it up to thinking a little bit. I want to say, I'm going to say the seven Noahide laws to you all, and I'd like you to tell me, conceptually, which one would you put first? I don't mean which one is more valuable. I can't make that decision, neither we can, no one can. But which would you say is the prime, the first one of the seven Noahide laws? Let's go through the seven Noahide laws. Don't kill. One. Don't commit illicit relations. Two. I'm not necessarily in the, in the right order because then it'd be you too easy, right? Don't commit idolatry. Three. Now, four. Don't blasphemize. Birkas Hashem is called. Don't steal. Don't eat flesh from an animal that is still alive or is taken from the animal while it was alive. Set up court systems, number seven. So I'm going to open this question first. Which one would you put as the first, the starting point of the seven Noahide laws? Open question. Let's hear your opinions. Not to wow, blaspheme. Wow, that's a hard one. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, I would say not to blaspheme because, you know, in order to have any commands, you've got to have recognition of the commander. Okay, that's very good. Very, very good, Dan. Uh, I'm, I'm going to support you 90%. 90%. But on the principle you're saying that without understanding the commander, the source, everything else will not go. Beautiful point. Good. I hear that. Let's see some other people. Beautiful point, Dan. What other people? I, what do you, I was, what do you think? I was going to say exactly that. However, I would also add that the next one up, if not that, should be theft. Because the idea of theft goes into so many deep levels of what is actually thievery. It's not just taking someone's uh, shovel from their yard, which that is. But it's so much deeper. It's about destroying character and blaspheming of another person or hurting another person. I think theft would be a good one. But all of them well, are so important. Why would you say it's theft then, according to that logic, why would you say it's theft of a murder? Say again now? According to that logic, which I think is a very good idea, why would you say theft over murder, according uh, to your because logic? Because 
if if a person is taught about theft, they would understand that murder is a level of theft as well. You're stealing something from that. That if a person is born with gift and value from Hashem, and you take that person's life, you stole in that person's life. It like encompasses a whole lot of things, to include coveting another person's spouse or sexual or immorality so, or whatever. What do people think about Rod saying? Let's get some feedback. We're having an open discussion first. He's crazy. He's crazy. What do people think about what Rod saying? Input, you hear, you don't hear. Rod is saying that the idea of theft, of, of, of not recognizing the other person's space, to infringe on the other person's space, to burn down their stores in mostly peaceful Protest. riots, protests, that is a problem because it shows an underlying break with what with what rod with people with god with both with both because god's involved god's got god he creates the environment we live in and then people that take and use this environment to grow themselves and to develop themselves and to have parnasai etc cetera, etc cetera. if okay. you take that you're also robbing from hashem okay okay good i hear but again, I, I we got to get because what you're going to see is that it's all interconnected, obviously. Yes. Yeah. So okay. So but there's there's an overlap. We got to understand here. Okay. So that is the idea, Bob's idea of theft. Of uh, anyone else want to, and I, I and I want to explain to this what I'm trying to get at today because if we go and say the seven Noahide laws on their own, well, we can say have a four minute class and go and you can go to sleep. This is not what's going on here. The depth of what it means to steal. The reason of why you can't eat animal from a live flesh of an animal, how that is a root of everything. What idolatry, what murder, what all of these things are in all of their details is if we came close to doing it, the society would be, wow, what a society. Okay, good. Tari, you had an idea. Uh. For mine is uh, honor and keep the Sabbath. Now, he got a problem. He got a problem, Tar. <laughs> yeah, I know. And uh, that's, that's how come I really don't call myself no hide because I go beyond <laughs> the seven laws. And I know I don't okay. keep it like it's supposed to be kept, but. Okay. That's, that's so let what me. I let, do. So Tar, Tar brings up an incredibly important question. Tar brings a very, very important question. Here. So I want to explain the question that I want to ask what Tar brings up because again, we, we we're all we're all this is an amazing group of intelligent people. So we all heard the Ten Commandments. So we seem to have three missing. I mean, maybe even four, possibly, because uh, eating live flesh and judges is not really actually the Ten Commandments. Some, so why would a person think that of the seven Noahide laws, Tar's favorite is not there? <laughs> why? What do you think? Tar, Tar, Tar's like, you know, Tar, you're like me. It's like, you know, and they say, what's your favorite musical band? Is like, okay, that's like, who listens to that anymore? Like, okay, they, 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 What's the favorite mitzvah? Tara's got a favorite commandment, but it's not in the seven. Why not? A great question. What do you what do you people think? Well, first of all, you didn't ask that. You you asked what was now. the best of what is the favorite of the seven. Now, I if know, you say what is your favorite Tar, favorite command of Hashem, I would say the keeping of Shabbos. But at the same time, it doesn't have the application to seven laws. However, right. however so, yeah, so so what but again I think so I asked the question. So why why isn't it there? Why isn't it there? You know, you guys say I love it. So why isn't it there? Right, right, very important. Got... By the way, I, I want to explain to you my answer is gonna be very, very important for what Shabbos should mean for Noachai. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's a real question. We're 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 letting our minds go a little bit to think. So why why is it not there? Great question. Dan, you had an idea, I think. 
Uh, yeah, Rabbi, I got a couple comments online. Uh, Robbie Jones is uh, saying that he would uh, put idolatry first, and then I asked him, why would you put it first? And he said, well, Hashem is master of the universe. He says, start by honoring Hashem. And then I also have Goela from uh, uh, Colorado uh, saying uh, murder. She would put murder first, destruction of part of creation. Beautiful. Okay. All right, good. I want to I wanna answer uh, um amongst you all said beautiful ideas, all all true. One person said the approach that I was going to say, and I will explain that, and I will, I, I will explain how it's interconnected to what you're all saying. But first, I need to answer Tara's question. Tara, I'm not leaving you hanging. Don't worry, Tara. I'm here for you. Don't worry. So so why is it not? Why, why is it? So the answer is like this. Because the when I when I say what is my role, and I want to now speak in terms of a Noahide, it's not one of the seven commandments. Well, why not? Because the idea is: do I need to continuously make, build, and create in this world? The Sabbath for the Jews is a very strange concept. Because what it means for a Jew is that is that my creative processes throughout the week that I am commanded to create must halt on the Sabbath. Now, wait a minute, I understand. You know, hey, I'm like, I I I I love creative stuff. I feel creative right now. I want to go and build a building. I want to make a painting. But I can't. So the idea why it is not a one of the seven commandments is because I, I'm not going to explain the Jewish perspective. I'm going to explain from from the Noahide perspective. Now, Jews want to talk about another, another point, but for the Noahide, Noahide has to continuously build in this world. There is no time to stop. Now, however, what I think you love about Shabbos Tar is that there is a day where your creativity is tuned in in a, a creative way to build things that you feel more more focused. That's different than saying, I cannot do certain things. Jewish law, which makes me forbidden from working on the Sabbath, doesn't. It, it's a very different con concept then physical work, it happens to be creative process. I need to be able to shut it down, tune in, and not create anything. Now, now that has that's a certain reason the Jews do that, how they do it, and why they do that, and how to do it right, and what can be done wrong. So, so for the for the for the non-Jew, and I, I may explain as we're going along in the process, why does it like this? You'll see that God willing over time, and I explain this this concept, but there is a need to continuously help create, build, put positive energy into the world. That is the root of the job of the Noahide. And yes, on Sabbath, you may be able to go and <clears throat> feel tuned in the way you might not normally. So if you feel the 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 creative you're an artist and you feel the urge to paint and now you have a creative thing then you got to do that a, a jew can't do that that's not what he needs to do so so the re the deeper reason is and i'll ask for another time but the reason why it's not in the seven noah laws because the concept of the of the work of the heavens and earth must be continued in a non-stop process is the normal structure of the universe that makes sense a little bit tar uh yeah yeah i uh just when you were talking here i got thinking uh the noahide uh from what i understand we're supposed to come alongside the jews and help them out well the life doesn't stop on the sabbath there's things that need to be done so i understand that the jews can't be creative at all. So then that's where us Noahides can step in on the Sabbath. We're not, we're not supposed yeah. to, I mean, we're not committed yeah, yeah. to do that. Yeah, so yeah. We can go Beautiful. in there and help out whatever those Jews are going to need, you know, right. 
And so that's right. that's what I'm kind of understanding. Right. That's beautiful. And that's really even why, Tar, in, a, in, in another sense, in a very deep sense, that's why what you said before, the world doesn't stop. What, what would be the ideal situation right now? If I can get all my Jewish brethren to say, OK, we're going to learn Torah in depth day and night. And you'd say, hey, I got a farm. I got this happening. I want that. I want to make sure the world keeps going. These guys are learning the Torah with all its intricacies. That becomes part of the plan. That's what you're you're hundred percent right. The, the connection of and, and this is something that I will explain more deeply. But let me say it again because I once said it in passing when Rod asked me something. But the Jews, there's something called the internal and external, right? I have the soul pushes me, the soul and the body, the body goes and expresses it. But the soul and body have to interact as a unit. There's something called the external, taking care of the external, there's something called the internal. And the external and internal, as they connect, as they form a union, the light of the Torah, the light of Hashem is able to be perceived in the world. That's the relationship between the Jews and the non-Jews. That's the deeper relationship. Yeah, can I ask you one thing? Yeah, please. Is there any problem with Nancy and I doing our best to honor the Sabbath? Is there any problem with that? You, 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 you what, depends what honoring means. Ram is not, again, we'll go into halachas as we go into, right now I'm saying in general. The problem is, is, is not honoring. Honoring is great. Honors. This is this is this is the day, and the Jews have to keep this to keep the laws to go and to say I'm not going to do all these things because that's not that's not what you're supposed to do. As I said, when you go, if you feel for me, if I have this creative urge to paint, because I'm a painter and I and I do it on Shabbos, I have done a very very terrible terrible thing. Even if I'm going to paint the Mona Lisa, which I'm not. But even if I could paint the Mona Lisa, it would be bad. If you had this expression that you would not bring out on the Sabbath, that would be bad. That expression that you're supposed to bring into the world, you should continue. And, and when you're feeding it towards the Jews have a certain role they have to do on the Sabbath. And I want to, to, to be part of that. In, in in the way they're keeping, but in the way but the way you're keeping Alexa, yourself, stop. that's great. Then then you've connected. Okay, all right. Let's get to the finale of my the answer again. I want I want to say who's everyone's right or wrong here, but I would start with idolatry. Okay, I would start idolatry. Why idolatry? Because everything has to come from the starting point that there is a. Creator, he is one completely, not with our crazy ideas of what we think one is one and not two. Superman, really strong. No, 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 no. We have to understand the idea. And this is very, very hard for people because everyone tries to understand God. And once you try to understand God, you're finished because you can't do it. No one can do it. Not possible. We only understand how God manifests to us. We do not understand God's essence. Once people are talking that language, they make people into gods. We cannot go and limit because we need to understand this one source. One source. Now, watch this, everybody. When you look at that and you look at the seven Noahide laws, now you'll see there's three roots, really. Because there's three kinds of relationships. One is between human beings and God. One is between human beings and others. One is between human beings and themselves. Okay? So now I look at the first, I look at idolatry. Idolatry is a root. It's a breakdown in relationship. There's no source of God if a person thinks in idolatry. And we'll talk about what it is today because Today's idolatry is very unique. Very unique. 
It's so amazing that, that, that not amazing, so terrible. The idolatry of today is largely the ideology called a Amalek. It's random. It's no God. It's, it's chaos. It's randomness. Nobody, no crazy idolatry thought this for years. <laughs> you know, how many people really thought of that? But that's that's the that's the idolatry now. So we need to understand this. So now I want to move from idolatry into understanding murder. Somebody said murder. Very, very important. For Jews, there are three laws you have to give a life up for. That is murder, idolatry, and illicit relations. And other ones are other cases, but but those are called the, the three person a Jew is his life for not to commit idolatry, not to commit murder. But I want to play murder to you a second. If I tell you, I say, you know what? Um, you should really love people. You know, you really should love people. So you say, but why? You really should love them. You'll be a nice person. I say, I don't understand. You know, I went to I went to I went to college, right? One of the great elite thinkers, Harvard. And the, the, the minds of America that don't know that genocide is wrong. It's amazing. The brilliance of the morons. It's fascinating. Amazing. So if I say, wait a minute, I, I went to Harvard and I know that I come from a monkey. So I know that one monkey doesn't kill another monkey. Well, maybe he does. Yeah, I think he does, actually. If he wants to be the strong one in the pack, he kills another one. But you can't murder, because you understand you come from one source. When you understand this one source, there's no fraction. Everything is a product from the one source. What do you mean? What, what, why should I should love you? You know, if 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 if, you, if you're my brother and we come from the same parents, well, a normal person would feel love. If you don't come from the same parent, all right, maybe I do, maybe I don't. But the concept of murder has to start with the concept of why should I love you? What did the Nazis say? The Nazis said the Ubermensch. Ubermensch was Nietzsche's idea of the Superman. The Superman could kill the weaker. That's what they said. They said the lion doesn't care about the lamb. All right. So once we understand there's one God, there's one source, there's nothing else, by definition, I cannot go. Now I cannot. I, I, I mean, yes, we're going to talk about because it it's in the negative, don't kill. But the reason why you don't kill is this person is is made in a divine image. He 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 has he has humanity just like you do. Well, why do you think that your blood's redder than his blood? Okay, let's move to the other side. Illicit relations. Well, that's a root also. That's when a person can't control themselves. They're out of control, and their desires just pushing them. There's no boundaries. Wait a minute, God gave boundaries. This is not, this is off limits. This is not yours. This belongs to this other man, this other woman, this other situation. You can't, you, you this, and that's what Rod was saying before, because it extends. Because now the boundaries, you have no boundaries, the person can't control themselves. Those are the three roots. Now I want to show you the next three really are an extension of that. And that's why when I said originally, Dan, I said your idea was very good about blasphemy because, yes, because blasphemy is an extension of which of the commandments in a certain sense? Of idolatry. But Dan said very good because the truth is, when a part, it's amazing, the language of the state commentaries when they explain what blasphemy is, it means the person empties himself out from everything that is good in them. Listen to this. Listen to this. A person, who's greater, a person or a frog? I think a person probably. A person can speak. They 
they can communicate. They have an inner spiritual component they can bring out through their power of speech. So when a person goes and rejects all of the source of goodness that is what they have, they're lower than the frog. They're lower than a, than a mosquito. Because they've taken the godliness part and they've, they've, they've rejected it. That's what the blasphemy is. So in that sense, I think what you said before, Dan, is, is a thousand percent. I, I, I think that, it's, that, that the root of it really is the breakdown relationship between man and God. So the blasphemy comes out as the, the expression of that, that lack of understanding. Because we're going to talk about idolatry in a second. What is that's, that's today's topic, a little bit of an introduction. But what is idolatry? What is it? That. You know, everyone's fast to say, you know, the guy relies on his money. His money's idolatry. Is it true? Well, uh, possibly. Uh, what happens if a person thinks that there is God and there's a force in this world that God created? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I, I'll, do an, I'll do an experiment now. Ready? Watch this one, everybody. I want to do an experiment. Explain to me. Everyone see this pen? Okay, I want you to tell me now. Why did the pen fall down to my paper? Come on, we all went to school. Gravity. The answer. Yeah. Gravity. 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 Is that true? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's true. True. But wh why is the gravity? Well, I can explain to you scientifically, you know, how forces pull have a have a, a pulling effect. A, 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 the mass of the four of, of an, an object is a pulling effect, but why should it be like that? Well, because that's the way God wanted it. Mm -hmm. Whoa, 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 whoa! So if you walk around and, <laughs> and you go to and you go to science class and they say why did this fall and you say because God wanted it, although it's true, they will look like you that you like you're crazy. Why is that? Well, because the world has a natural system that God set up. So what happens is it's it's it, we have to understand the root of everything is God, but there's systems He set up, and it's going to be very very tricky for the the advanced person to actually look at one source. It is going to be a, a job because there are forces that seem to be natural. And they are. Because that's the way God created nature to function that way. But it's a very slippery slope. That's why I've told you before. The numerical value, the gematria of the word for Elohim, the name of God that is how he masters all of nature, is Hateva, is nature. Because you could look at nature and you could think that, oh, it's Mother Nature, right? No, it's not. There's, there's not, not Mother Nature. There's no, there's no one's name. Mother's name is nature here. Or you could look at the world of nature and see that it is the root of it is what God set up. But that's why and the, the world has these systems. Like, for example, I'm not going to get into it right now, but the idea of malachi. Malachim are what they call in English, I dislike saying the word so much because it has all of its weird connotations. Uh, a, a malach is the word an angel in English. I don't like saying it because it has all the connotations of all the things that, <laughs> that people think what angels are. But the word malach is from the word malacha, action. And just like there is gravity, which is a physical rule there are spiritual rules that god set up in the system god doesn't need helpers but everything that happens you, you you run into a problem in life where you have to like work within the world of nature and yet understand there is no other power there is no other source there is no other power 
And, and the deeper we get this, and this is why the whole thing of idolatry, don't make images. Why? Because an image means I want to limit. I want to I want to understand God. I want to make it that it makes sense to me. It's limited. You know, that is forbidden because you've already ruined the whole thing. You got the wrong idea. So, so like, that's why I said, Rod, uh, uh, Dan, even though I do think it's a great point of the root of, of, uh, uh, of, um, uh, uh, blasphemy, how it's so bad because it really empties the person from all of their goodness because their whole goodness is drawing that light that they're getting. And now when they go and they, they go, they have taken the highest part of their existence, their power of speech, and they have now disconnected and emptied themselves from any connection to the source that's given them good. Terrible. And that's why it's it's one of the seven seven sins, death penalty for that. It's not it's not like you know because it, it it's it's it means the person just cut off, gone. And I hate to say it, but but you know, but the people who commit adultery, what if they don't believe? What what what? I'm gonna go through the seven, all of them to show the interaction. But right now, I wanna I wanna get to the point I want to talk about today. So I'm gonna give you. Just quickly, the three I would say as roots, idolatry, illicit relations, murder, coming down, I would say blasphemy as an expression of idolatry. I would say theft as an extension of illicit relations, because what theft is, is that I have no boundaries. Religion is that I have no boundaries, right? Now, you see the all, all these things keep playing into each other, but theft means there is no bad. You can't stop me. Yours is my mind is yours. I keep, I, I keep putting my hand. It's not really because the people are evil. They say yours is yours is mine and mine is mine. But the ignoramuses, um, you know, the people who like, you know, Bernie Sanders, who have the position of mine is yours, yours is mine. So that idea is called an ignoramus because it, 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 it smells of theft. There is no boundaries. There's no lines. That's an extension of list relations. And then murder, an extension we're going to see, is going to be the idea of animal uh, eating animal from live flesh, which the sages say there is nothing more cruel. It's just the expression of cruelty. Just chop the animal off. He's still alive there. You just disregard it. It's the root of cruelty, which really as a root, as an expression of, of murder. And then the seven laws is going to be to put this all together. That's an overview we're going to get to into each one. Today, what I'd like to do after this introduction is I want to talk for a second to you about the world situation in relation to the first of the one I want to start with today, which is, and we'll do it for a few weeks to really understand it because there are a lot of aspects of it, but idolatry. So I want to ask you a question. Do you think that let's call it I, I i let's call the new world order we'll call it this woke mentality the woke men do you think the woke mentality believes in god it's an open question we're in the first of the seven noah laws talking about is idolatry do you think the people who espouse my hand espouse the ideas of what we'll call it the woke culture of today, by and large, do you think that they actually believe in God? Uh, I'm op I'm open to hear what people know because I, I don't I don't know these people really. I don't I don't hang around with them obviously, but but uh, um, but what do you people think? Aren't they just replacing God with themselves? I mean, to me, right. Right, so you think they don't believe in God, right? Because that's what you're saying is, if I understand you right, is that um, the, and, and, and this is, I, I think what, what Nancy is saying is very, very crucial because um, because the, the point here is if you look at the roots of this new culture, it really is the idea that how dare God determine reality? We can go into our virtual reality. We can get Mark Zuckerberg to create a virtual reality. We can be in Disneyland. We can say this. And if we say this is it, this is what it is. 
it, in its root, it really is the rebellion against God. It's fascinating if you look also at the, the communist movement. The communist movement, people don't realize, probably the most describing feature of the movement was atheism. That was probably the most defining feature of it. Because why? Because there is no God, that's what they say. And so therefore, we are going to create our utopia. Right? That's the new version. So, so that really, do, do, do people agree with that or disagree with that? Yeah? So this is really the root of the issue today. And I, I think if you if you look at if you look at the uh, of the dynamic of the uh, of what people think, it's largely that. It's like, no, we don't believe in a God. Which is very funny. You know what's very strange about that? How you see today, let's say, you know, queers for Palestine, queers for Hamas, it, the whole unification of the woke movement with the radical Islamic belief is very interesting. Don't you find it? Isn't that, isn't that wild? It's like it's actually, it's actually the, just weird. It's not strange. It's very it doesn't have weird. An explanation. Yeah. Well, the, well, the, first of all, you know, the Christians and the and the Muslims fought, you know, for a very long time throughout the Crusades. I, just nobody told the Muslims that 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 they didn't get the memo that the war was over, so they 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 didn't know. But but the Christians, at a certain point, said, "Well, we don't want to do this anymore." Uh, it's not working out too good, you know. We got we got other things we want to <laughs> we like to do, and nobody told uh, um, some radical Islamics that that this was happening because this is a very strange unification. It, 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 it's really and what Rod just said just a minute ago, I think really is is part of the answer because I I am very open to hear if someone has. A, an explanation of why these people <clears throat> unite other than their ignorance. They're obviously ignorant. We know, I mean, that that we know that. We know everyone's looking for uh for what they would the perceived downtrodden. We know that. I I I I understand that. And I, Wait, you know, Rabbi, I, you I, realize I, that those people that live on that perceived ethical approach are the very ones that reject the wisdom and ethics of God. Isn't that weird? They pick up their own little special niches of we got to save the world. We got to right. do our own tukun. That's exactly why I started with this. Right. That's what Nancy said before. It's idolatry because who's God? They think they are. Mark Zuckerberg thinks he's God. You know, Jeff Bezos, they, they, all these guys think they're God. The deep state think they're God. They all do. This character thinks he's in a... You know? And, and, and I'm not telling you that every, you know, every guy on the other side of this aisle is, has got their head or screwed on right. I'm not saying that. But 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 really, obviously, you, you know, uh, this is this is a game. This is a game. This is not real. This is this is people people playing playing uh play <laughs> playing God. I don't know. I don't know if you heard this. Uh, what's his name? The Senator Kennedy had this thing. Uh, I'll leave it. So it's a very funny joke. Yeah, but I'm gonna leave it for now. All right. So anyway, so uh, um, so I I want to get back to the point that Rod just said a minute ago, and this is an open question because I I don't I don't fully have an answer here. I have an idea. But but does anyone have an idea why it is that that there's this alignment? I mean, again, people that that believe in the philosophy of this whatever this new version of wokeism, which is uh, some kind of weird hybrid of socialism, communism. There's very little '60s love stuff anymore. It's you know just you know it's very angry. But okay, whatever it is, 
but it, but it, it centers around this idea of we are we we the people are not we the people we the people are the dictators and and it's not God. How do they align with the people who have have the most problematic view for them of anyone? How do they align with with the radical Islam? Does anyone have any any, any thoughts on that? Have you ever thought maybe they think that they're just aligning themselves with the underdog? They feel like an underdog. Yeah. That's true. I, I said before, I think that's that's definitely um with the without benefit even thinking of the doubt. The benefit right. of the doubt rationale is that yeah, they're victim really, mentality. They're, really ignorant. they're ignorant, they don't know. And you know, and like, you know, maybe they, and there are, but there are some people no. that I told you that really are are that are that um you know uh um ignorance there there really are and some of them are waking up a little bit so so that's Mm -hmm. good you know it's good to know that some people just are that ignorant uh it's sad they also don't want to follow the 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 boundaries that that uh judaism sets you know i mean there there's absolutes they do not want to follow the absolutes what they don't understand is that uh um the other side has absolutes also, but they don't read it. They don't understand it. You know, uh, the Muslims right. have absolutes also, but they just know that they don't want to follow the absolutes of Judaism or Christianity. You know, right, right. I, I agree with you. It's very it's true, but it's just so funny because the absolutes uh, uh, um, from a Jewish perspective are so much more. Um, um, uh, uh, tailored towards reality meaning that meaning that um like the 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 rabbis stopped judging capital cases before the temple was destroyed 40 years before it because society had gotten to a low point that it that for them to to try the capital cases would not have brought out the 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 proper understanding of the value of life and the importance of what was happening so the rabbis the torah has the application that is is beautiful for the world to be able to evolve into a world that would understand the truth so if they can't handle a, a measured uh, boundaries. How do they handle unmeasured boundaries? Mm. Bizarre. The truth is, I I don't I don't really have the answer. The answer I I think really is that it's it's a deeper subconscious um, metaphysical uh, system that God's setting up. It, when you look at when you look at Europe, what's happened? It's almost inexplicable. The Europeans who by and large were Christians and, you know, and to whatever greater or lesser degree they participated in the Holocaust and, and uh, um, committing the atrocities they did um, while supporting their, their beliefs, um, they have basically sort of given up their country. It's almost impossible to, to understand. It's really fascinating. You know, one one is inclined to say that they don't understand what's happening to them, and they're getting what uh, whatever they what they're creating. But this is the most amazing thing, I, and, and I don't know how to how to say this to more more clearly to you all. I I, I saw I saw a a uh, like a poster that some I don't know woke people made. This is not a regular, you know, uh, um, their holiday season. This one, they have to go and fight against the the genocide. So, uh, okay, what, what what genocide are you talking about? Ah, oh. I, I want I want you to understand something. I want to be as very clear as I can be. Imagine it's nineteen thirty nine. You can't identify who the Nazi is. The Nazi is calling the other person the Nazi. It's amazing. That's where the world is. I, I, I understand. 
I understand when they're trying to come to kill us. They do it all the time. It's called Amalek. It's called the root of evil amongst the nations. It's the Nazism that exists. And what's happened is, is that the ones with the Nazis are accusing the ones who are being attacked by the Nazis to be Nazis. It's unbelievable. It's a world where up is down, down is up. And that's why we got to start with the first of the Noahide laws. We got to start understanding there is one source, one source, one creator, no other power. There's no other power, no other creator. God created the world. He is omnipotent and beneficent. You must understand those two things. Because that's the, 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 the theological mess that people have. How do bad things happen? Okay, we'll talk about it. You can read about it. You can, but you have to send two principles. God is omnipotent and beneficent. He wants his... He gives good, and he is all powerful. So you can't go and say he's fighting against some other source. He can't. Da, 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 da. That's all boundaries of people losing their connection to the one source. They're teetering on idolatry because they're seeing. Wait a minute, who's in charge? You know what? If I figure out the science. We'll live forever. We'll make it to this world. Won't blow up. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm not against. I'm all for finding out good climate things like like Monsanto's. Maybe they can stop poisoning everybody. You know, but but what's happening is, is that they're creating these global views that are nonsense because they think they're God. John Kerry's got his own plane. He must be God. Right? I mean, this is like, this is unbelievable. It's literally unbelievable. So we have to understand that there is no other power. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a little hard. I'm sitting in the synagogue and I'm giving the, the, the speech and the bombs are falling. Well, what do you do? I'm not telling you. And I said then also, I didn't say people should should stay. I said those who feel it's illegal could leave because God put us into the world and he created a system and there are rules. And we don't go and walk off a cliff and say, oh, but you have to know, you have to know there's still only one source of everything. And what happens is, is that the world went through different stages. It was idolatry. Now let me explain what idolatry was. Idolatry was, because it's really hard to understand, it was because you, you can't kind of imagine why would a guy want to connect to this thing, this idol or whatever it was, and not go connect to God. It's like illogical. Because someone explain that to me. Why, why is it like idolatry? Wouldn't we rather be all connected to the real source? Well, yeah, but there's a problem. The problem is you can't manipulate God. He knows everything. You can't fool. You can't manipulate. The idea of the idolater is they keep their little world of their little power machine. We're coming to read the book of Exodus, the book of Shmos. The Egyptians. Uh, these guys, these guys were not dummies. They had the occult. They had the, they can't. Do you know how to build a pyramid today? You know how to build mummies? With all the science, the great science of America and the Western world, they can't build a pyramid. But these guys, they were, they were, they were pretty uh pretty on the ball. And they were masters of the occult. They wanted to manipulate the powers because they didn't want to connect to the one source because there's another power uh, and the power above him above him uh, uh, and I can manipulate it and what's happened today is the new version of idolatry 
I don't know if you want to call it science. I don't know if you want to call it, I wouldn't call it philosophy because there's no brains in this system. But but this wokeism is is a belief that it's some kind of, you know, fairy dust belief of of my of my power that I will will reality to be a different way. I will make up logical, illogical stories and I will find science or I will find medicine or I'll find, you know, technology to dictate my own belief. Because now the person made themselves God. It's a fascinating thing. It's a fascinating thing. And so what... We got to first do, we're gonna, next we're going to get into a little bit more. I'm going to try to explain the parameters because there are real parameters here. What happens if a person says, okay, well, you know, I believe in God and um, and there are physical, there are spiritual forces God put in the world. How do I relate to those? The concept was called shituf. Can a person, and we'll see the difference between Jews and non-Jews and what does it really mean can a person think that there is, yes, I believe in one power of the world, but people want to go through an intermediary? Can they do that? What does that mean? That we'll get into in the details. But I need you all to understand today is that the root we must start with is the idea of understanding there is no other power. There is no other power. That is starting point one. It's very hard because I believe there are people who believe powers that be direct their lives. And they're all reactionary. And if, if he runs and if he runs and if, and if this guy, you know, if, uh, uh, you know, I don't know if this guy has the senator has uh, indigestion to fight with his wife. Who knows what they're going to blow the world up? Ah, uh, they have everyone else is controlling their world. That's one type, and then those think that they control their world, and then there were things that that, that that there is no control of the world. It's all random. All of these variations are all variations to the concept that the root has to be. We need to understand there is one source. And he's involved in the world. He directs the world. He's beneficent and omnipotent. Those are the characteristics you need to understand. Because the ancient Greeks, for example, they believed some concept of God, but he wasn't involved in the world. Okay? You know why? You know why the great ancient Greeks thought, they said, I mean, these guys were philosophers, but they missed the boat here. They thought that, you know, God's so lofty. What does he care about these little things about, um, about, about my world? And, and that's really a very sad and unfortunate misunderstanding. Because God is not limited. It's not harder for God to be involved in your problem and every, you know, seven billion people's problems. That's only because you think of God as a person. You know, we don't understand God. Take that out of our minds because that is where everyone goes wrong. Cannot fathom the unfathomable. You have to know what you need to know is that God has created the world, He directs the world, and He brings the world towards its purpose. He's omnipotent and beneficent. There are more categories that my mind is explained, but I'm giving you these because. Because the idea, the three principles I told you were the three principles why the story of coming out of Egypt happened. And that was for all, all humanity. The coming out of Egypt showed three things. There was a creator of the world. He is omnipotent, can do whatever he wants, and he's involved in reality. He's directing reality. And that's what they didn't believe. And all of a sudden they say, whoa, how could these things happen? And it was the calling card. Now, that happened then. The miracles, the revealed miracles, have moved into the concept of the hidden miracles. And therefore, you need to be a sensitive, developed human being to actually see it. And that's why you need to read and understand 
this. We pass down from generation to generation what happened in Egypt. Why? Because God presented his calling card. All of a sudden, everyone realized, whoa, whoa, whoa. I heard the things happening to Abraham. He was one person. I heard it happening to Isaac. I heard it happening to Jacob. And his kid. But now a nation that this happened to us, that the laws of, of, of reality are suspended, are overcome, are being directed. That's the statement. It's a creator. Is omnipotent. He, he runs the world, and he's involved. He cares about it. So those are the principles that we need to understand. The root of the first of the seven Nochad laws I want you to really, really meditate on this week is the rejection of idolatry, which means the rejection of the belief in other powers other than the omnipotent, beneficent source of all. Everything else is an illusion. God willing, we're going to see through the illusion. But when you see through the illusion, you're like, wow, it's real. And I will end, I've said this many times, I'll end with one of the great comforts of the great uh, sage Ramchal, Moshe Chaim Matsato, who explains that what happens in this process that we're in right now, and this guy thinks this one's in charge, and Hamas is in charge, and Biden's in charge, and this is in charge, and da, 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 da. in the end, when you see that God moves reality to exactly where he wants it to be in the end, everyone gets the aha moment. There's no other power. So, to be able to make it on that really rough ride we're on right now, we got to start with the first of the seven Noahide commandments in my system, as I said now, and which is to understand there is one source only. And he is the power of all. That's my idea. Questions, comments, thoughts on number one.